Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I think I'm going to show you around my shop a little bit because I've been making videos, but um, you guys really haven't seen what's going on here. This is this is more of a storage area. I keep my my tools and um, some of my other stuff. It's a it's a CNC plasma cutter that I uh, that I actually made myself. No plans. Drew it on a piece of paper and designed it as I went, and it works great. One of these days I'll make a video with this. I haven't been using it much at all lately, but it works really, really good. That's my plasma cutter right here. Hypertherm Power Max 85. This is my sanding, sanding and grinding area. And please forgive the mess. I actually work out of this shop. I got my uh, Harbor Freight press that I made a video of the other day. This is a drill press. I bought that a long, long time ago. It's kind of keep where I, where I keep all my rechargeable tools. I got a lot of electronics kind of stuff in here. Connectors and multimeters and my rag bin. Books, magazines, catalogs, my mechanics toolboxes, basically all kinds of mechanics tools. Both of those bottoms are Harbor Freight bottoms. You can't beat them for like $369. Craftsman boxes, I've owned those a long time, the uppers there. This is my Bridgeport milling machine. The 1976 model. It's a do-all surface grinder. Here's here's my pride and joy. It's an icky guy. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Icky guy A20. It's a 10 horsepower lathe. This has a um. The lead screw is a ball screw. And uh, with the ball screw, I mean, this is one of the only lathes I've ever seen like this. You don't have to wait for the, uh, the number to come around, uh, the threading dial. Um, you just put it in gear and it, and, it, and it just goes. So you set up your threading. You set up your threading on the, on the dials and levers. You don't have to wait for the uh, thread dial to come around which is pretty awesome it's a very nice setup um, it's a 20 inch swing 48 inch uh, bed length I also put this DRO on it when I got it and I put this uh, tracer attachment on it too and I actually got an older video that I, I uh, showed using this uh, tracer attachment Poor video quality, very poor. It's one of my first YouTube videos, but um, it works. It works really good. There's another Craftsman bottom. I got mostly machinist tools in there. Machinist tools. That those drawers are all inserts. These are all inserts. Um, most of them I got in lots, you know. Um, stamps. I got brooches, drills, drill bits. Some laps, some counter sinks, chucks, live centers, dead centers, chuck keys, spiders, tap and die sets. And I got a drawer full of taps over there. Miscellaneous, there's some boring bars here. Tiny little rotary table that I use, little indexing head. Um, this is more machinist stuff. I got my chronometers and gauges and all kinds of stuff in here. This is like my ream and large drill box. A little 4x6 bandsaw, which which works. This is my welding area here. Let me take you around this side. This is an Everlast 
PowerTig 250EX. This works really good. Has a lot of features. I got this just to, to play with and, and I like it a lot. I really like it a lot. And this here is my my preferred go-to welder. This is a, a Lincoln Ideal Arc DC 250. It's got the uh, wire feeder on it. Lincoln LN7 wire feeder. And then I also have a spool gun for it. Spool gun. And it works off of this. I, um, I generally use it for MIG welding aluminum um, just because aluminum doesn't push good through the long through the long uh, six foot conduit on the uh, on the large wire feeder over here. The uh, wire speed control for the spool gun and what I do I got them set up with uh, I, I kind of hitched this up with uh, a trailer plug here so when I want to go to one wire feeder to the other, I just swap out the plugs and, and plug one in, and then I'm ready to go. Now this is my compressor room over here. That's where I keep my compressor. And I have an air dryer. That's a Harbor Freight air dryer. That's actually probably the best deal on air dryers you'll ever find. They don't sell it in the stores, but they have it online. Uh, this is a spare air tank that I've been kind of messing with. I gotta test it, see if it's any good. And this here is my uh, three-phase converter. That's a made from a 15 horsepower motor. There's a bunch of capacitors in there. And this is my 220 box. And then over here, this is my three-phase panel box. And that's the control panel for the, uh, for the three-phase converter. So you can see I, I got my noisy stuff in here because the three-phase converter, the whining and, and the compressor, I can just shut this door over here. And it keeps the noise way down. This is mostly milling stuff on this side of this shelf. This is a rolling shelf. And I picked up at an auction, but it works out good. One side is is uh, milling stuff, and this side is all lathe stuff. And these are all my uh, my quick change tool holders. And you can, I wish I had a few more, but um, these bigger ones are a little more expensive. But uh, I, I got all this stuff with the most of it with the lathe. I bought I bought a few of these. These Chinese ones here and here. I bought a few of those on eBay. But I think they're like 40 bucks a piece, even for the Chinese ones. Got a bunch of indicators. Uh, here's a tractor that I'm working on for a customer. Uh, can't wait to get it out of here. It's taking up a lot of space. I'm, I'm a carpenter by trade, actually. I mean, I have all these, the machinist stuff and the welding, that's, uh, I was kind of educated in that, and that's that's my training. I went to school for manufacturing engineering, but my father was a contractor, so I've been working in construction for a long, long time. I'm a carpenter, and uh, so I got a lot of carpenter tools, and uh, that's really what I do for my bread and butter for business. I'd like to be doing a little more machinist work and welding, because uh, I'm getting a little bit older, and the, the carpentry's, my body don't like it so much anymore. I got tools, I got a lot of tools. You need it to make money in, in, in carpentry. And this besides the stuff I got in the truck, that's just the stuff that don't fit in the truck. Got a little finger brake here, a little Grizzly 48 inch finger brake, which I, which I use, I like it. I wish I had a bigger one, but this one works fine. Oh, here's a kiln that I picked up at an auction. <laughs> Believe it or not, I paid $300 for this thing. It had never been used. The school bought it. The school only had three-phase power or something, and this runs on single-phase. They could never hook it up and use it, so it was brand new when I got it. It's like a $3,500 kiln. 
I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but you know, I figured I could do heat treating with it. The only problem with it is it's a little bit too big. It's gonna cost a ton of money to, to heat treat things with it. I'm thinking about uh, maybe using the controls and the elements out of it and building a smaller uh, enclosure for doing some heat treating because uh, the controls are awesome. They're programmable. Pex pipe, wire, hoses, more wire, more wire, more wire, uh, all kinds of sanding strips, tape, my tape barrier, rope, some tubing, metal tubing, flex tubing. That's about it. All right, guys. I just thought I'd show you my shop. So if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching.